Hello, everyone. My name is Jennifer Stay. And I'm Steve Stay. And this is Coloring Bliss. And I have Steve here today because we are going to be talking about a new product that is very inspiring to him. Yes. Kuretake has some new colors. <laughs> so excited about these. These are the three that Kiritaki has had for a long time. These are their Gonzai Tambai paints, is I think how you pronounce them. And I've shown them on the channel and I use them all the time because they are so much fun. They had the gem colors, the starry colors, and they have the pearl colors. And now <laughs> They have these moody, beautiful graphite colors. Yeah. So we're going to talk about what is graphite paint, what is the Kuretake paints, and how does this compare to Steve's favorite graphite paint, the Derwent Graphitint pencils that he <laughs> loves. And in order to make this conversation even more complete, I have ordered the Graphitint paint pan set by Derwent to see how these differ from their pencils that Steve adores. Have we so ever much. tried those before? I don't remember the paint no, pen. This so that's new too. Brand oh. new. So we're going to yes. put two graphite products head to head, Kiritaki versus Derwent. Let's get started. Now, just a second before we get started on that head to head and talking about graphite paint, I wanted to give a little update on Rose. She's doing really, really I'll good. Turn this for you. <laughs> I think her progress has slowed. She still has issues with her back right paw, but she's walking and jumping off the couch, even though every time she does it, we just go, <gasps> but you know, she's a dog. So we got to let her have quality of life here, <laughs> but we have a ramp and all these things that we're doing to help her. And she's just doing really good. She's very sleepy. <laughs> so I just wanted to let you know that. And then second of all, I wanted to say thank you to everyone. It's been, um, um, a long few weeks. Yeah. <laughs> I caught COVID and so did Steve. Our kids brought it into the house, but honestly, I think it's pretty miraculous that we made it all the way to 2022 before we actually got hit by the COVID bug. Yeah, unfortunately, so, we got the the variant that wasn't as as potent. As potent, yeah. yeah. So I'm still recovering. Steve is mostly recovered now, and it's just going to take me longer to recover because my body is chronically ill, and that's just par for the course. But if you hear a bit of a stuffy nose or if I cough or something, that's what that's from. Thank you for all your patience. We missed last week's video, but now we're back, so let's talk paint. So the first time I was introduced to graphite in a form other than just a number two pencil that you use at school was a set of pencils. Let me show you. I think they're by Derwent. They're in this little case right here. Um, yep, yeah, they're Derwent. They're called the Derwent Drawing Pencils. And not just Derwent, there's several different lines that create a water-soluble graphite. So how these work, you draw these out, and you hit it with a little bit of water and it does this amazing wash. It's really a fun product to play around with. And it was eye-opening that graphite could be something other than just a number two pencil or even the standard drawing pencils. It was fun to have something new. Now this sent us down another path as well and eventually we ended up getting these pencils right here. This is the Derwent Graphitint line and what it is is graphite that is water soluble so again if you hit it with water it's going to change um, but it's tinted so you get different shades and colors but it's still graphite so it still has that gray moody look to whatever color you have so yellow for instance is really difficult for this line of pencils because you throw yeah. gray into yellow and it doesn't look so bright and cheerful anymore. But that's kind of the feeling and I think what Steve likes about them. Right. Is, am I <clears throat> speaking for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's exactly right. I, I love that look. Yeah, so I keep my graphite graphitint pencils here in this case along with some um, ink tense pencils. 
So that's what, let me show you, the graphite, graphitint pencils look like right here. I think I've got them upside down for you, but you see them here. There are 24 different colors, technically, but this one right here is white and it's kind of pathetic. So white is, anyway, it is what it is. It's water-soluble graphite, and so you have to remember it's not going to magically turn into like the Kiritaki pearls where they just shine and the colors are vibrant. It's a very different creature. So I was researching paint the other day. You know how when you're sick and you don't feel good enough to do anything other than just sit and shop on Amazon? <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what I've been doing lately. I came across the Kiritaki paints and it said something, new colors for 2022. And I was like, oh, sold already. I don't care what they are. I'm <laughs> buying them. And then I brought them up and discovered they were graphite type colors and that was exciting and I started reading the comments and the descriptions and everything that they talk about on the Amazon page and I got more and more excited because they were talking about ways of using this paint that I've never tried before. I've never used graphite, water soluble graphite in this way before. So I was just thrilled and bought it but of course when you're shopping on Amazon they're like well hey if you like this then you're going to like this one too. This is the Derwent Graphitint Paint Pan Set. And I believe from my research, what this is, is the Graphitint Pencils in Paint Pan Form, which is really cool because often what I do with the graphite is create a wash or a base layer of color using these pencils because they're so moody and interesting and then you can build on top of it. So it makes sense to have it in a paint pan form rather than a pencil form. So we're going to open up both of these and swatch both of them side by side here in my Swatch Bliss book that is printed on watercolor paper. So that should give it a really good advantage to make the colors and the graphite pay off really well. But I also want to see it on black paper. I want to see it on tan paper. And then we're just going to play around with it and see what it does in my sketchbook and do some comparing. I'm also going to show you the original three boxes, how they look when they're swatched out just to remind you how fun the Gonzai Tambai paints are by Kiritaki. So let's start by unboxing the ones that we're all here for, the Kiritakis, and then we'll unbox this one next. So they come in the same type of packaging that the others did. Um, let's see, they say that the pans, oh, I was worried about this, this is that here, Steve. <laughs> Those can be, I always get paper cuts on that plastic. Yeah, yeah, they're a pain So I'm it. just gonna let him do it. While he's opening that one, I'll open up this one, maybe. Oh, he's being quite stubborn. Okay. So, not fun to get into. <clears throat> no, but that's okay, because once you get into it, although I store mine all in their boxes, so that means every time I open this, it's going to be a problem. I'll probably just mod the packaging, cut it off or whatever to make it easier for me to get in and out of it. Because if you're like me, if you have a product that is just slightly difficult to get into or may cause some pain getting into it, you probably won't reach for it. Okay, so here we have the little pans. I love how Kiritaki does this. These pans are big, and we'll compare it to this pan size here in just a second. But I love how big they are because I'm often using, especially when I'm doing washes of color, a really big brush like this. And this is just, it fits so perfectly in there and these are great little pans. And then on the back, yeah, we have the name so we can keep track. And I don't know if these are available open stock or, or not. Look, they have the name there again. So all of these come out. If you wanted to just paint with the one color, you could pull it out, spray it, get it going, and just use this and not have to activate all of them. It's really quite clever. Yeah. So I love how Kiritaki does this. That's the same for all of these. I'll just give you a little peek real quick. Same types of pans. You can see I've been using these. And I think these ones only had, yeah, 
just Japanese on it. So I'm grateful that they've started to put English on here for little old me so that I can tell what color is what. Especially in these pans, they're going to be a little tricky to see exactly what's happening because of the graphite. Okay, let's peek at this one now and see the differences. So one difference right off, you get six colors of graphite here with the Kiritaki, and with the Graphitint you get 12. And this is the case here, opens up. Um, we've seen a case like this before when we did the metallic paints for Derwent a few weeks ago, and I wasn't, I, at first I was really excited about this little swatch chart because I thought maybe it would be waterproof because it feels sort of plasticky. Mm. And I, I use a spray bottle all the time to activate my paints and get them all wet and juicy and ready to go. And I was like, oh cool, my swatches aren't gonna get messed up. But <laughs> the paper sort of warped and did weird things when it got wet, so you still need to be careful of that. Okay, so here we are given, let's break into this here. We've got a plastic protector on here. There we go. Here we're given a water brush, which we looked at and um, really analyzed last time we did a thing like this. Um, and this is a decent brush. I, I wasn't super impressed, but it was it's good enough for its purpose. And then we have a little sponge, which I, <laughs> I don't use the sponge. Maybe I'm doing something wrong with painting. I don't know. But I never use the sponge. In <laughs> fact, I think it would be better just to take it out and have another well where you could mix up colors instead of having a little spongy. Okay, so here we have our colors that came with autumn brown, russet meadow, green gray, slate gray, ocean blue. We're going to swatch them all out and see what they look like, but I am f just interested how this is a solid block of water-soluble graphite. That's really fun yeah. to me. I can't wait to see. So my first question is, how do the two lines of graphite paint look side by side? Do we have a favorite? Uh, yeah, that's what we need to find out, so let's do some swatching. Okay, the first paints I'm going to swatch for you are the Derwent. They are in the pan form and the pencil form, and we're going to swatch both, but let's start with the pans. Next up are the Kiritaki, the brand new colors that we're all here to see, and I cannot wait to play with these paints some more. Now I also wanted to swatch my original three Derwent sketching pencils. It comes in light wash, medium wash, and dark wash. Let's see what these do. Now finally, I wanted to swatch the Derwent Graphitint pencils that correspond with the paint pans so we can see if the colors are the same or do we get a different payoff. So much to learn. So I'm going to pause the swatching right here before I swatch it on black and tan paper and let's take a little look at first impressions. I think most of them are dry. There's a couple that are still a little bit wet, but first impressions, these are just delicious. <laughs> they have such a vintage, manly, automobile type feel to them to me. I think that's why you like them, right? Yeah. Is there a set that's jumping out at you the most? Well, what surprised me when you were laying them down were the, the Kiritaki were really opaque. Yeah. Like potent. Yeah, that, I thought it was interesting <laughs> that you actually had to lift paint off yeah. to show the color underneath. So I went back on the right side of each swatch with a wet, clean brush and lifted some of the color off so that you could see the undertone because they're so dark and they felt different when I was painting with them versus these. And it has to do with the fact that these are, I believe, yeah, they're Gonzai Tambai paints. And what that means... I'm not going to get into the details, but the binders and the way they make this paint is different than our traditional watercolor paint here in the United States. Um, it's just a different formula, so you get a different feel, and oh boy, did I feel it. When you stroked into the pan, it felt different, a little sticky almost, hmm. versus over here where it felt more like a traditional watercolor paint. So the two are very different. And I am really excited to play some more with these. <laughs> but I do want to see them on black and white. Before we do that, I wanted to show you the other three lines of Kiritaki paints and how they look. Here we have the Kiritaki Starry, 
the Kiritake Pearl and the Kiritake Gem on black. Let me move it in the light oh, wow. so you can see. They're just good. That's why I knew when they started a new color, I was like, yeah, I have to have it. Now let me see if I can find them. Yeah, Kiritake Starry, Kiritake Pearl, and Kiritake Gem on the white paper. Let me just move that in the light a little bit so you can see the payoff of those three lines. So now you come over here, and what we're going to end up with is more of a matte, and ever so often the graphite will catch the light. Graphite has a sheen to it, um, but it's not like that kind of sheen. <laughs> it's a different creature, so we it's can use subtle. it in different ways. These are still drying, so while they're drying, let's swatch on black and tan paper now. And I think I'm just going to swatch the Derwent paint pans and the Kiritakis. Watching is all done, so let's compare how these look on the two different colored papers. We've got a tan paper and black paper. Here at Coloring Bliss we have a print shop and we can print you coloring books and swatch books on any type of paper that we carry. Black, white, um, marker paper. We just we have a ton of paper so come check out the print shop. Um, but let me move these in the light. I love the way they look on the tan paper love it. It's like makes it richer and more interesting. I didn't lift any color on the Kiritake line. I just let it be as pure and strong as what it wanted to be. Um, there is a bit of sheen that is coming off of the Derwent pencils more so than the Kiritake pencils. I think that's interesting. You can see the sheen really good oh, yeah. up there in the aubergine and juniper versus the other colors. So that graphite sheen is coming through really good with the Derwent's. And let's bring this one up too. So, which paper do you like it on better, Steve? Black, tan, or our watercolor paper? If you had to choose. <laughs> I would probably choose the watercolor. Yeah. Watercolor paper has a a coating on it. It's called sizing and it helps wet media sit on top of the paper longer before it soaks down in. So it just gives you a bit of an advantage anytime you're working with a wet media. So highly recommend watercolor paper if you feel frustrated by your experience with water type products. It may be your paper. Okay, the next thing I want to try is I'm going to bring it on to, this is a sketchbook that I have that I do a lot of different mixed media and just practicing in. Uh, so I want to practice with, we're going to do the Kiritake and the Graphitant. We might as well play with both and see how they perform because there is something they su suggest you try and it involves a spoon. <laughs> So I'm okay. really excited about this. But first thing we have to do is get some paper, some color down because you can't do the spoon trick, I guess, until it's totally dry. That's hmm. what I was reading. Okay. So let's get some colors down and then let's play with a spoon. <laughs>
Okay, we've got two pieces of art going. This side right here is the Derwent and it's still drying. The Kirataki has had plenty of time to dry. And for the most part, I've done just one color on each flower. And then in the leaves, I played around with the two different greens just to see how the colors interact when they get put in together. Same thing over here. One color except for the centers of the flowers and then two colors of green to make up the greenery. So I'm going to dry this down. At this point with this kind of art I would either come in with another layer of the paints just to add a little bit more dimension or you could come in with um, color pencils, markers, all kinds of stuff. Um, mixed media is so much fun. I love it. For this experiment I think I'm going to come in with a little bit more of the colors to try to give it a little more dimension and then uh, we'll see how that pays off. I'm at a point now where if it was me doing art not for a side-by-side -side test I would start throwing in a lot of mixed media and some shading and just have a great old time but I wanted to leave it where it's at so we can see what the paints have done so far. Um, okay again on the left is our Derwent, this set right here, and on the right is the new Akiritake colors. Um, what I want to do now that it's dry, there's roughly two coats of paint on each of the flowers. I want to try the trick with the spoon next. So the idea is that because the graphite is in there, graphite's a type of metal, right? A mineral, a metal. I think so. <laughs> so it's in there mixed in with whatever binders and, and water. And so technically, if you take something like a spoon and polish it, it's supposed to bring up a graphite shine. I have no idea how much I'm supposed to polish. Am I supposed to sit here for an hour of polishing? <laughs> If that's the case, then that would not be great. But is it just a few minutes? So I'm doing quite heavy pressure. I've got a large, more of a tablespoon size spoon, although I'm sure you could use whatever. And I'm just doing small circles and sort of burnishing it in, polishing it up. Let's move it in the light and see if anything has changed. <gasps> I see some shine. Do you see the shine? It's shining the the top texture of the paper. Come on, let's see if I can get it to catch for you. There, it caught for a second. Bring it up closer. So I think there's like a hundred variables here. If I put down a ton, maybe like three or four layers of the paint, which is usually how the Gonzai Tombai paint works. You need to lay it in layers to get the best payoff. And if this paper here is a watercolor paper and it's quite textured. So that's what we're seeing. I'm gonna hand this over to Steve. He's got stronger hands than me. He's like, what? <laughs> You're doing what? So I want him, let's try you polishing the blue one. Okay. And see if a little more elbow grease does the trick and then we'll try it over here on the Derwent and see if the same thing happens. While he is doing that, I wanna talk a little bit about how I have felt so far using the two paints side by side. 
Now the Kiritaki, this set right here, I paid $17 for this set. I love the big pans. It makes dipping in with a brush so much easier, but it does have that Ganzai Tombai feeling, a little bit sticky, and it doesn't act exactly the way I anticipate watercolor acting. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Neither, it just depends on what you want and what you're looking for. Okay, so per pan cost, I paid $2.83 per pan, and right now the Kiritaki graphite colors are really hard to find. I think I really lucked out buying it when I did. So hopefully you'll be able to find it if this is the set that you want. I think the colors are more intense than the Derwent Ink Tents. I mean, the Derwent Graphitint Pencils. I mean, paint, oh, this is getting really confusing. <laughs> but um, because it's so intense, that dark color is, is really difficult um, to work with, at least um, it's going to take more practice. Now, talking about the, the Derwent Graphitint paint pans, this, this is what I was talking about that the little swatch chart does. The more it gets wet, the more it bends and is really difficult to work with. I think the colors on here are better. I think they're a little stronger, brighter tints. Less graphite maybe, maybe more a tint to it, I'm not sure. And it acts more like a watercolor so I can kind of predict what my paints are going to do as I work with it. I paid $21.60 for this little kit right here and it comes with a water brush and a nice little um, palette here. So that comes in at $1.80 per pan. As far as what I understand, there's a similar amount of paint in these pans as there are in these pans. And I think it has to do with the shape. You know, this is more of a block and this is more of a, a, a shallow pan of color. So per pan cost, the Kiritakis are about a dollar more per pan than the Derwents. And the Derwents are available right now and I kind of like them a little bit better than the Kiritakis. Um, they're just different. So having both I'm really happy with, but if I were to recommend one over the other, I think I would send you to the Derwents because they have a little bit more of that graphitant shine to them and they have a better color. So when you reach for this greeny color, you really do get a greeny color where on this set it's much <coughs> more, lots more gray in it. It's a tone, right? Gray plus a color is a tone. Much stronger toned version of colors I can here. see how if you... <coughs> If that's the look you're going for, you know, you want something really kind of muted, flat, dark. Yeah. Oh, then yeah. And they're amazing. But yeah, the other ones. Now, what's interesting, I just buffed up a bunch of them. Oh. And the graphitint really shows up. The graphitint does the buffing trick better than the Kiritaki. Again, another reason I guess I would send you. Look at the shine Steve got. Ooh, look at that versus over here. I saw him doing a lot of elbow grease over here and yeah. I'm not seeing. I went over your flower again too. and it This just... one's got a bit more shine to it, but I'm impressed with the Derwent. I think the other thing I'm kind of excited about the Derwent is I could come back with the exact same color only in pencil form now and really pop those shadows and get them to do some deep yeah. dark things where over here all you have is the paint but it's still a good thing i'm not saying this is bad but this i think paired with the actual graphitint pencils you've got a lot of yeah. possibilities and this is exciting to me I, I didn't catch it if you said it. Are those the only colors available in the pans for in the graphic? In the graphitant? pan, all I saw were these 12. So hopefully, maybe someday there'll be more. But for now, I'm not going to complain. This yeah. is great. It's fun. So, so pretty, too. If you can get your hands on the Kiritaki and you need your full set syndrome satisfied and having all four sets of the guns I tum by paints, then get them. If you're looking for an experience with water-soluble tinted graphite, then I would send you to the Derwent and I would also encourage you to pick up a set of the pencils to go side by side because that's going to open up all kinds of things. In a coloring book, you could lay down a wash of color, then come in with the graphitint pencils to add the shadows. It's really cool. Yeah, it's fun. It's very fun. <laughs> <laughs> so
So I hope you enjoyed this and learned a lot. Sorry that the Kuratakis are out of stock, but it is what it is. Just put it in your cart, I guess, and wait for it to come back. Um, in the meantime, get your hands on the Derwent, because these are really cool and really fun. So yeah, very neat. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did and learned a little bit more about water-soluble graphite. I highly recommend you do a deep dive into graphite art. There are some really cool products out there that I have never even tried, like liquid graphite. It almost looks like acrylic, but it's graphite. And like, there's some cool stuff out there in the graphite world. So expand your artist um, horizons and go check out graphite. It's really cool. Thanks for joining us. Thanks again for all your support as we've been getting over this sickness. And I hope you have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Bye-bye, everyone.